All right, guys, even here, so as Toronto Pro is coming up this June 1st and 2nd, I'm going to do a little prediction and a little preview video about all the competitors that might and will actually do it. And I say might because I'm not sure about some of them. For example, Nathan Diasha. If I was sure this guy is competing, I would give him first spot, obviously. I mean, he's the top seven Mr. Olympia competitor. He's one of the guys with the biggest potential. His body is super amazing. I'm a huge fan of his physique. But, you know, he had those legal problems as he's a drug dealer or to be more precise, a steroid dealer. And there is also another guy in the comment section below that claims that he's from Liverpool and that he's heard some rumors about Nathan doing this even before the police quote-unquote caught him. So it's probably true. And that's probably the reason why he is not doing Toronto Pro, unfortunately. And he is actually doing British Grand Prix, which is not on the same level as Toronto Pro. And I'm not sure if that is a qualifier for the Mr. Olympia. I don't think so. If you guys know, tell me in the comment section below. And I don't know how Nathan is going to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. And if he doesn't qualify, if Big Ramy doesn't qualify, if Phil Hay doesn't show up, that's gonna be one disappointing Mr. Olympia. It's gonna be so uneventful. But let's look at it from the positive side. Let's be a bit more optimistic because it's exciting. Nobody can be sure who is going to win it. It's not obvious. It's a wide open door. So anybody can take it. It's exciting, right? And the thing is, I noticed a story from Nathan Diasha, actually. He posted this story and he says, Toronto won tab away. Maybe my understanding of his slang is not perfect. So if you know what he meant by this, please explain it to me in the comment section below. I'm not sure if this means anything about Toronto Pro, but this shape here does not look like he is about to start his carb up phase. He does not look depleted. He does not look three days out which he would be if he was actually doing Toronto Pro. He does not look in shape, ready for the competition. So it's probably some kind of a joke. I don't know what this is. If you guys know, tell me in the comment section below, but he's not doing Toronto Pro as far as we know. So without Nathan Diasha, who is the favorite to win it? Well, we have Ian Valier. And this guy looks amazing. He is a beast. He is an absolute beast. He's a machine. He's a huge guy. He looks so freaky. He has some humongous arms and uh, huge legs, everything on him is pretty much looking beast-like, he's really a beast of a man, but on the stage there are a couple of flaws, he barely qualified for the Mr. Olympia last year, but he was there, and he's young, he's just starting, I'm sure he's gonna do great in the future, but as far as Toronto Pro, he's the favorite to win it, yeah. But we also have James Hollingshead, a British beast, and he took third place at the Big Man Weekend Show, and he faced, actually, Ian Valier at the last year Big Man Weekend, bro. And last year Ian kind of blew him away, to be honest. Although this year James made some crazy improvements, he looks much better, but his placing at the New York Pro was pretty disappointing. He came, <laughs> I wouldn't say flat, but I would say blurry, kind of washed out a little bit. So his placing was disappointing, he took 8th place. So for that reason, we cannot count him as a favorite to win this show. But it's possible. If he actually brings some super crisp, hard conditioning and Ian doesn't come at his best and all the other guys also come a little bit off, it's possible. All these guys are top-notch bodybuilders. It's all about who brings the best conditioning on the due date. So James is in the mix. He is probably going to be in the top four. He is going to be in top four because there are also guys like John De La Rosa who just won Puerto Rico Pro by bringing an insane conditioning, the best shape of his life. He was so hard, so crisp. His back looked really impressive, head to toe. From the lats, spinal erectors, the traps, everything was on point. He is known for his arms. He has those long muscle bellies. His chest looked on point. His stomach was in check. He was very well conditioned with the perfect shape. The only thing that I didn't like very much is the shape of his quads, but his hamstrings were dialed in, very bulgy and muscular, and also his glutes were peeled to the bone, so everything was on point. John was very strong, and I'm thinking maybe he has even bigger chances to win, actually, not Ian Valier. Maybe Ian is taller and kind of more freaky, he's just bigger, he's huge, but I don't know if he is complete enough from the back... I don't really like what I see. I don't like what I saw last year at the Mr. Olympia and his other shows that he did. 
I mean, yeah, he looked impressive. He looked freaky, that's for sure. From the front, though. From the back, his back wasn't thick enough. It wasn't. It was a bit shallow. His glutes, also hamstrings. So his whole back area is not that impressive, as John's actually was at the Puerto Rico Pro. But John is not known for bringing great conditioning. And I don't know if he's gonna bring it this Toronto Pro as well as he did at Puerto Rico Pro. But we'll see. We'll see if he manages, which is very likely to happen. I believe John is going to win it. I believe so. I believe he has bigger chances than Ian. But however, Ian had pretty good offseason. So maybe he made improvements. He made crazy improvements for the last couple of years. So it's possible that he changed his back. His back maybe looks much better now. Who knows? But I don't think that's very likely to happen in such a short time span. But we will see in a couple of days. Everything is possible right now. And you also have Josh Wade, who is very likely to take third place. So my prediction would be John De La Rosa first, Ian Valier second, and Josh Wade actually third. Because his shape, this California Pro, a couple of days ago, wow, wow, that conditioning is really, really good. He was really peeled to the bone. I don't know if he can get any more shredded. His structure, however, is not very good. For that reason, he didn't win California Pro. If he had a bit better structure, he was more conditioned than both Tim Budesheim and Patrick Moore. And the actual chances of him repeating this shape are very high, just as well as John De La Rosa's are. So I believe that Josh Wade will bring an insane conditioning, you know, paper thin skin, like he did at California Pro. I believe John will also bring the same shape. And if Ian comes similar or the same as he was in 2018, he will not win this show. I believe he will be second place. Because of his structure, he will not be third, but maybe, however, maybe Josh even beats him. It's very likely, again, just because of Ian's back. But we'll see what happens. I would say that James is going to be fourth place, but all these other guys also can bring something special to the table and beat him. Beat James. But that's my take on it. That's my top four. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like this video. And if you want to see more bodybuilding content, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.